Brave Nation, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in the Brave Combat Federation Lightweight Division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of four wins and four losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs in at 70 kilograms. Fighting out of Sochi, Russia, by way of Kazakhstan, presenting Fyodor Babich. And his opponent, standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of three wins and one loss. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs in at 70.75 kilograms. Presenting, fighting out of Russia, Murad B. Once again, we might see a little bit of a striker versus grappler battle. I know that Babish definitely considers himself a striker anyway. He started training karate at age nine, went to kickboxing at age 16, and then shortly after that, just a year later, started training MMA at age 17. So again, experienced guys with lots of experience, uh, with uh, a lot of you know storied backgrounds and different types of martial arts. That said, Sebastian, it's been known for quite a while now. It was said by Bob Fitzsimmons around 1910. He said nine. This was a boxing world champion. He said nine times oh! out of ten, the wrestler will win. Overhand right there from Fedor Bamich hits the target in a big way. Bilarov seems largely unfazed by it, though. But it's it was a good move of Bobich, you know, show some of that power early. Give Bilarov a little. Oh, oh staggered. There's that wrestling. What a takedown. I mean, Bilarov was on him in just a second, less even. Just took Bobic down at will. And now we'll see what Bobic has to work with on the ground. Sebastian, there's that shelf again. Habib is inspiring a generation of Russian fighters in a new and improved way to win in the cage. Absolutely. There he is cooking the legs, just making it so hard for Bobby to get out of there and improve his position. Even if a fighter does manage to escape from that shelf, and it does characteristically happen, you're going to get punched in the face in doing it. There is no way to get out of that shelf and not catch something upside the melon. Absolutely. He is moving the figure four hook her on the legs is Bilar of really committing to this position and he's just so active you know as soon as Bobby starts moving he has to eat a couple of shots of so far though Bobby will seem to be taking a good stride not all too phased by some of the strikes They do accumulate, though. These only strikes to the body. The strikes to the head are a little bit like money in the bank. They're not going to end the fight right now, but over time they accumulate. They leave the, the opponent more tired, more shaken emotionally. So what are you looking at here? Money getting put in the pit, piggy bank, shot by shot. Very well said, Jerry. Absolutely. It is a great investment, especially, especially this early into the, into the round. I mean, Bobby showed off some of his power, and Biller all was like, okay, guess what? You're showing off your strength, I'm showing off mine. So Bobby's doing his best to try to get up, but it's just so hard when his legs are hit together like that. Mixed martial arts was the modern incarnation of it. was born in 1993, so 28 years ago. But it still continues to evolve. And this shelf that you're seeing here was developed here in Russia by Fremd of Brave Combat Federation, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Probably his father had a hand in it too. And as you're seeing, when you develop new techniques, it's very hard for people until they learn it too. We saw it happen in the 90s with heel hooks. Fighters did not get every heel hook. They all got broken legs. Then they learned. So th what we're seeing here is the evolution of mixed martial arts. Absolutely. I mean, MMA is a constantly evolving sport. I mean, if you were to flash back just a couple of years ago, you see different emphases in, in, in high levels of MMA. I mean, now the sort of Dagestan style of wrestling has just become so dominant. But, I mean, as you mentioned before, 
uh, for a while of his heel hooks. Uh, we had some very strong American style wrestlers for a while that were dominating people learned how to defend that. And now we have Bilar advancing to side control. This is not good for Fyodor Babic. <laughs> Babic from Kazakhstan, but actually trains here in Sochi. What Bilorov is looking to do here is step over his opponent's arm, trap it, and then rain down punches unmercifully. It was unsuccessful. He ended up in top half guard. Let's see what he can do with it. There's a knee shield. Knee shield is in place to protect the bottom fighter's head. It was unsuccessful. This wrestling is just Absolutely. And Babic, to his credit, he did a good job at defending there momentarily, but it's right back into square one. And now, we have the again, putting the legs together and just making life miserable for Fyodor Babic. Babic did try a key to his credit. He is not staying on bottom and simply trying to survive. He did try a key lock. But the problem with him attempting an attack is it leaves you open to your opponent progressing in his position, and that's what we're seeing here. This is a shelf mount with terrible elbows coming down. A couple seconds left in the round. Pass to side and down round end. There you go. spilled on the ground in uh, Fyodor Babic's corner. Obviously, we don't want fighters slipping. Oh, oh, that was a nice little combination there. Leadful strike and a finish off with the leg kick. But another takedown. I think Babic is going to regret going for that front kick that he threw there. It's a problem in this sport. Everything that's going to give you a reward is also going to give you a risk. If you want to move around and throw light shots at your opponent that are never going to stop the fight, you can do that. You can do that for five minutes if you back up a lot. But if you set down on your shot, you sink down, you throw a shot that could end the fight, you can get taken down. That's what we saw happen right here. And again, we see Bilirov on top, threatening the side control, threatening the shell. He's now got full side control. I believe the last time he wanted to trap that near arm between his legs, leaving the head exposed. We may see him move towards that very shortly. I think so too, Kurt. I think he wants that crucifix position. And it seems to be a little bit more. I like those knees to the midsection on the ground. You know, you don't see them too often, but they are effective. When, when they are what that shows is that Babic is not using his guard to, a, to the fullest extent. You can't create that kind of distance. Move the knee all the way back. Beautiful guard wow. pass. And land that knee if your opponent is trying to move his hips away and go to guard. If you have a relatively passive guard, yeah, it can't happen to devastate this is some high level grappling here from Murad Bilal. I mean, the way that he passes is just, it's What's something that? to go. Oh! Interesting here from the bottom. Fyodor Babic goes to the armbar. It looks all right, but elbows not quite. I don't think it's quite where it needs to be yet. He's out. And there's a payback for that. Absolutely. I mean, as you said before, Kerik, high risk, high reward. 
if you're on the bottom and you go for Bueller up there, but so far, well defended from Fedor Babic. This is highly unusual. We've got a head triangle and a key lock simultaneously. Oh, and once again, Bularov is on it. Oh, and it looks tight. Turned it into a hammer lock. It's hard to get the submission with a wrist that far up the back. Not impossible. Oh, that is it. Bularov, Bularov puts a stand on it. Two seconds of round number two, declaring your winner via submission due to Kimura fighting out of the red corner, Murai!